my life has kind of taken a unique path, as you all know, from what you've expressed here today. We're women of stories, right? We all have our own unique story that got us here today. My story began when I was 16 years old, I tell this story, where my, I was having a visit with my dad in the kitchen at my mom's house. They were divorced. And he said, well, daughter, what do you want to do with your life? I said, well, dad, I want to help people. He said, oh, no, you don't want to do that. You don't make any money and you listen to people's problems all day. So what did I do? I made a decision to seek dad's approval and I said, he said, you have a head for business. You ought to be doing business, girl. So do I regret it? No. But how many of you have ever made a decision that went against your core mm -hmm. just to seek the approval or support of somebody else? Have you, how many, show me, we all have at some point, right? Absolutely. So I went on to get college educated at Chico State, got a degree in business administration and finance, and I grew up in Silicon Valley, got my first job out of college with Hewlett Packard, and started building an accounting career. But when I played Barbies, as the youngest of two older brothers, I played a lot with myself. Um, I always played house. I wanted to be a wife and a mother. That was always my goal, stay at home mom and a wife. Now, I was fortunate enough to achieve that goal as well. I married an officer and a gentleman. He was a Navy commander in the Navy, and we had two beautiful children, so I am the mother now of a 21-year-old and an 18-and-a-half-year-old, where my nest is half empty. But something that I realized in my marriage of 13 years, which I was so blessed I got to stay home 11 of them, and I'm forever grateful for how hard he worked to provide that for us, is that I wasn't gonna reach my infinite potential in that marriage. We had grown apart and just became roommates. And I knew that there was something more for me because the yearning of helping others never left me. Now, I'm really good at math and I'm good with numbers. And so as a career, when I went back into the workforce, um, I established a financial controllership job, but I chose to leave my marriage and it was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Now, how many of you have ever made a decision where you had to stay true to who you are, but knowing that it was going to hurt others? It's not always so easy to do, is it? No. And as women, we get conditioned to throw ourselves so much into the lives of caretaking others that sometimes we lose sight of our true selves and who we are and what we need to do for ourselves to really live the life that we know inside of us exists for ourselves. So here's what I came to learn. After leaving a marriage, I had to re-enter the workforce because I was out. I left it in 1998 when our first son was going to be born. Internet hadn't really been launched too much yet. And I re-entered it at 2011. And in that period of time, re-entering the workforce, it's been eight years now, I've been laid off twice, and the third time, I was fired on my 91st day, completely blindsided. So I know what it's like to start all over. And my oldest, who graduated from high school, went and enlisted in the Navy and was gone two months later. So I have half of an empty nest, and I've heard some stories in here. What did I do? I went and got a dog. <laughs> <laughs> to fill that void, I rescued a dog. My daughter's still living with me at 18 and a half going to school. But in the process of having to start over, leave a marriage, do all of that, transition kids from eight and 10 years old to 18 and a half and 21 as a single mom, is that we women are resilient. Mm -hmm. But resilience is a choice. Are you resilient? Oh yeah. Or do you have to learn to be resilient? Am I the only one? <laughs> I'm resilient. Who has to learn? Show me my children. Who's had to learn to be resilient? Everybody has to. Right. And who naturally overcomes with resilience? Some do, some don't. So today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the importance of resilience. And my business, Blissify Your Life, um, I wanted to talk to you about bliss. Now, sometimes we think of bliss as some place to get to, right? Or uh, we're always striving for balance, like it's a destination to get to. Now, we women have been on our journeys, right? And it's our own journey, and we get to decide the destination. And we can even go to multiple destinations. But it's important to know where you're going and who you are, right? 
Because without those two things, you can get really lost. So give me an example to you. Throw out some ideas. What does bliss mean to you when you think of the word bliss and it just falls on you? Spa days. What's that? I said mine is spa days. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. To, day? Literally, yeah. the feeling, right? Yes. When you're done. <clears throat> yes. Somebody else. The beach. the beach. Okay. So when we think of bliss. We think of a certain doing that creates a feeling, right? Bliss is actually defined as perfect happiness, great joy, as a noun. The state of great happiness as an action verb. But today, we're going to use the word bliss as an acronym. Begin living in self-strength. And sometimes we get so busy and caught up that we forget to do that. We're so busy caretaking everyone else to the point of exhausting our own selves to depletion, which I heard in some of your introductions, right? We're women of doing. And we forget sometimes to slow down and just be. So I've identified five qualities that can really help you when you get into the driver's seat of your life and drive to those destinations that you have decided for yourself you want to go. And it's okay, there's gonna be detours, there's gonna be roundabouts, there's gonna be forks in the road, right? You might get on the wrong, off the wrong path, but you can get back on. But are these five qualities, I believe, are what are critical to help you get there safely, okay? So the first one is, give yourself permission. Now, I heard some of the ladies talking here earlier before some of you other ones arrived about how so much in the doing and the doing and the doing that it gets overwhelming. How many of you could feel overwhelmed at times? I know I can. I can. <coughs> but I have been able to master these five principles I'm sharing with you today. And it definitely makes things a much easier when you do. So I heard you as an example. I believe you said your oldest is staying home watching your little one so you can be here right now, right? And you're watching your phone, naturally so, that's what we do. But she gave herself permission today, right? She could have easily said, oh no, I can't make it, you know? But when we make ourselves a priority and give ourselves permission, then you're gonna be able to go back home for the rest of your afternoon feeling totally supported your children identify to you they're capable. They learn that mom comes back, right? And you have gotten some time to breathe out so you can take on more when you get home. You're more grounded, right? But here's the funny thing about women. Do we give ourselves permission or do we have to learn to do that? Learn, learn, learn. It takes effort and work and we have to learn, right? What do we do instead? Take more on. What's that? Take more on. Huh? We take more. We take more on, right? I can do it all. Or we justify and go, well, I deserve this new pair of shoes, <laughs> right? We say to ourselves, I deserve, therefore I'm then gonna have. But if you recognize the worth and importance of giving yourself permission, then you're gonna be a better balanced person. <clears throat> and that leads us to the second quality the priority and gift of self-care. Now, how many of you are good at putting into practice on a daily basis self-care? Awesome. So what is it that you do? Work out. Work out. Okay. You work out. <laughs> yep. Then you work out? I read. You what? Read. 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 Okay. As a daily practice. Daily. How about you? Work out. Okay, and what does that do for you when you when you take that time for yourself? It makes me feel great, refreshing. I don't know, it mentally, mentally and physically, yeah, the one hour to myself, and hiking and walking my dog too, you know, mm -hmm. just feel rejuvenated. And when you're doing that, does your mind get active or does it slow down and stop? It slows down. Yeah. So we have so much information overload coming at us now that we forget it's getting more and more increasingly difficult to find any stillness and time where it's quiet. I often get woken up at 3 a.m. and I literally love it. I get downloads, I, um, but also I lay there because it's when everything is finally 
still and quiet. And so I will remain awake for a while just so my body can feel the presence of stillness. And I really encourage you guys to create that space for yourself. Shut it down like computers. You got to turn it off and reboot yourself. You know, so why why are we not so disciplined in giving ourselves permission to take better care of ourselves? Are we really doing a good service to the people around us that we love, watching us constantly go, go, go? Because all we're teaching them to do is go, go, go. But if your children have a mom or a partner that has a, you to see, sorry, babe, I'm going to take 20 minutes for a bath right now. I'm closing the door. Or I'm going to go take my 20 minutes to read. Or, you know what, kids? Tonight, we're going to just get pizza. I'm not cooking tonight. You know, or I'm going to go and take that bath. And when I close my door, I'll put the timer on. For 20 minutes, I'm going to go relax. Why do we not do that? But when we do, we're teaching them valuable lessons. We're showing them and modeling to the people around us that we love ourselves enough to make ourselves a priority. And they'll learn that for themselves. It's so critical. And hearing your example with lupus, you know, you didn't just roll over and take the diagnosis and accept the fate and go down the path. You took personal ownership and started changing the way you do things. That's loving yourself with self-care, right? And then you start changing your diet, which is now healthier, and it starts the ripple effect for everybody else who's gonna start enjoying better foods, right? Because when we stress our bodies out, this is the thing that you don't hear enough about, is that dis-ease grows where there's unrest and there's stress, right? And we think in this overachieving, overdoing, over-accomplishing, over-informed, you know, push, 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 that that's the way to go. But really in the end, it will manifest outwardly. And it takes us, like we just were talking earlier, sometimes us as women to get sick before we'll stop. Mm -hmm. And the body gives outward signs to get your attention. And it'll keep sending them until you recognize them. Or fall flat. <laughs> yep. Or fall flat, exactly right. Right? To complete exhaustion, depression, whatever and we don't want that we certainly don't want to be women that model that in our communities and in our families so i just serve this as another reminder today you know to just begin living in your self-strength and self-strength is self-love it's giving yourself permission it's um loving yourself to take care of yourself first and oftentimes we think it's taking care of the kids and save ourselves for last i was guilty of that when i was a stay-at-home um, I'm not anymore, but it took me some, it took me time to learn that. And had I had somebody earlier like me to remind me as a younger woman, I might have caught on faster. Okay. The third quality is forgiveness. Sometimes we're go, go, going, and we're wearing a mask. And there's still something from our past we haven't let ourselves off the hook for yet, or we feel guilty about, or shameful or embarrassed, or there's somebody who has done something to you that may have hurt you that you're not able to quite let go. <clears throat> but you hear time and time again with forgiveness, right? It's, about, it's more for you than the other person. Because when you give it energy to keep you stuck from being able to grow forward to the destinations you wanna get to in your life, you're the one that's getting hurt. And then again, it can come up it can outwardly manifest through illness, disease, stress. So, you know, let that leap go. Do what you need to do with it. Dance with it, write to it, call someone up and give it, you know, but release it and let it go. Because we live like we have so much time and you're experiencing, you know, the personal loss that you've had recently. Um, and I've had quite a bit of friends in my life lately departing and it's a reminder that you know we don't have as much time as we think the time we have is right now in the moment don't waste a minute of it don't waste a minute of it and the last one 
is gratitude. Living in a space of gratitude. I love Kathleen's necklace, give. Um, you know, when you stay focused on gratitude, it helps shift the perspective of some of the hardship and difficulty that you might be experiencing in your life. Um, by focusing on the good, it allows you to shift in your attitude a bit so that you'll approach something differently, see it differently, and then it makes it easier for you to manage the life responsibilities that you have to have. So one of the things that I suggest that you do is keep a, keep a gratitude journal. And what I tell my clients to do is write in there three things that you're grateful for in your life. It's a bigger picture, right? But also then write three things that you're grateful for in your day. So it brings you into the present moment and do that every day for 30 days. Keep it next to your bed. Do it whether before you get out of bed or at the end of the day. Does anybody do a gratitude journal now? Okay, well, what do you do? I have a journal and I list the five things and then we speak it actually going to school with two kids like we actually talk about the five things we're grateful for five things we're uh, excited for mm -hmm. and then our positive affirmation and then we pray before they get to school I love that yeah how about you at night well I have teenagers so we're not always at the same dinner table every night but uh, for the past couple of years we go around and we say the make the top three things that we're grateful for that happened that day um, it's a great exercise, and sometimes they get a little frustrated because they have to, you know, think. Um, but as time has gone on, it's gotten a little bit easier for them because now they're looking for things. Of course, before they're like, oh, shoot. Um, they're trying to, like, copying the other one, like, no, you can't use mine. Um, so it makes them really think about it. And now I think they're looking for things, which, you know, you're re retraining your brain to totally retrain see more of the, the positive. Yeah. Exactly. And how about you? Um, we do two different things. We do one that's called highs and lows, which is the high of light of their life or that came and then the lows is something that they could learn from or something that had happened and then my boyfriend and I will either give them advice on how to change that perspective or how to react to whatever had happened and then also we do like the catch me game um, where we say what has happened through the day and then one of them we're kind of like kind of tweak where it was not what happened but it makes them like really think about what happened to us that day makes it more the other person is really engaged in what they're saying to get to pay attention to what they're actually saying. Mm -hmm. Find out what was not the truth or what they had changed. That's great. You know what's even really awesome is when you start <laughs> seeing your kids go, so mom, what was the best thing that happened to you today? Like they start creating the pattern and the routine in their own lives That's true, as they become adults. My kids wait because we're not allowed to say it until I went this. Uh -huh. Sometimes they like they're like watching me and like they go, hi, hello, mom goes, or dad goes, yeah. or whatever. It's so funny to see them like competitive while watching. And it creates tradition yeah. so that when they have families, they'll start doing it. We do something similar. I go camping with my kids every year and my big extended family to Trinity, and we do at the end of the picnic. I mean, at the end of the night, we have dinner together and we do the same thing. We all go around the table, you know, the best, the best moment for that day. And, um, and now they're adults now, and they lead us older older people off of it. So it is very cool. So an attitude of gratitude really does help shift. So when you're going through struggles and it feels difficult, um, just just even if it's just hey I got up right today, you know, sometimes that's enough. That's enough for people, and that's okay, you know. But just <laughs> changing that mindset. So does anyone have any other qualities that they find helps them in their journey to get to where they're going and um, that they want to share with others here? Yeah. I don't know if it's a quality or not, but I, I can relate to a lot of what you're talking about. Um, I was that mom, and I still struggle with this, as many of us do, is just go, 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 go. And um, it came at a cost um, with my health. Um, I was diagnosed with a couple of autoimmune diseases a few years ago. I was that working the corporate job, I had the side job, the kids, my husband's always gone working. And it was just like, the more things you can take on, the better, but it's really not. And I think a lot of times, especially as women, or I guess anybody um, being raised in today's world, is that a lot of times our value is found in our achievements or our things that we accomplish, like, you know, great job on the grades, great job on this, this, and this, when not a lot of focus is placed on who you are as a person. So that was something I 
I, the hard lesson of being completely debilitated for a while with the autoimmune diseases was, was um, that was when I finally learned to give myself permission for self-care because I didn't for so long. And it was almost like I was waiting for this external validation of someone to say, it's okay, you don't have to work that particular job. And it wasn't until a doctor, a physician had said, if you don't stop your lifestyle, you're gonna end up in the hospital or worse. And it was like, a, that was my permission. And it was like, why did I have to wait for them to give me that permission? Why did I not see that with myself? Um, it was a hard time, but it was a great lesson. So now I get to share that with other women because I don't wanna see other women just burning the candle at both ends and being as sick as I was. And I'm sure you can relate with lupus, um, how difficult it is. Um, so I appreciate you coming out here and, and sharing all those things and reminding us to give ourselves self-love because it's, it's so important. It's just one of those, that should be on your priority list each day. Yeah, and I want to commend you too for seeing the lesson. Oh. Because sometimes they'll get the wake up call and they still don't take the lesson, mm. right? And that's the beautiful part about the journey that we're on as women. It's okay that we have missed turns and we gotta do U-turns and we gotta you know, go in circles sometimes. It's okay, as long as we take the lesson and use it to keep moving us forward. In my belief system, I don't believe there's failure. Mm -hmm. There's failure if you don't take the lesson and use it. But if, if this mishap or the mistake or the misturn or whatever, you know, happens and there's a valuable lesson that you can use as fuel to make you better, stronger, and more resilient, then thank you for the experience and thank the experience. Mm -hmm. Because it happened to you for a reason to grow you on your journey. Now, um, I know we're probably getting close to a little bit end of time, so I wrote something last night that was kind of moved through me and if there's enough time, I'd like to take a minute to read it to you. It's not that long and we can end on it. And I have a copy to send home with each one of you. So you can read it in your own quiet time too and see where certain um, parts of it may be applicable to you. And I put together a little worksheet that you can work on in your own private time and um, invite you if you would like, if you do choose to do it and wanna call me to talk about it, I would love to talk to you about it. So I'd like to read you this. are you? Do you know who you are? Have you ever even slowed down long enough to ask yourself these questions? Or do you stay so busy serving the needs of others, you don't even know who you are anymore? Do you wake up in the morning and recognize the beautiful reflection that stares back at you? Or do you not even really see her? So many women lose themselves in the day-to-day -day exhaustion of caretaking the ones they love. They forget to love the most important person in their life, themselves. For some women, they have been through such horrific circumstances, they are too fearful to trust and love. Here is what I've come to know as a feminine truth. We are already perfectly imperfect, whole, enough, and lovable just the way we are, regardless of our circumstance, situation, past, childhood upbringing, or choices we've made. All of that lives in the rear view mirror in the past behind us. It was necessary to experience, to learn, grow, shape, and mold you to the beautiful, amazing, resilient woman you are today. Without that journey, you wouldn't know today how strong you truly are. So embrace the lessons, take them to heart, forgive yourself and others, release the regret, blame, and shame, and put down your shield. Stand in your personal strength, your resilience, and shine. Discover who you are, claim her, be her. But what lies ahead is up to you. There's a whole world out there waiting to see you and your magnificence. Whatever it is you dream of doing, become it. We want to hear you. We want to see you. We want to feel you. What is holding you back? Is it the monkey mind that tells you no one wants to hear what you have to say? You aren't good enough? 
are smart enough, skinny enough, pretty enough, where no one will believe you. I say feed it some bananas and the monkey will go away. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, most of the shadows of this life are caused by standing in one's own sunshine. What shadows are you casting in the sunshine of your life? Isn't it time to get out of your own way? I know life can have a way of doling your shine, but I say it is time to dust yourself off and shine your light brilliantly. We hold our own self back from experiencing our bliss. It simply begins with a choice, a choice to step into courage, change our attitude, and live with resilience. Adversity is a fact of life. Unexpected curveballs are going to cross your path, but it is in how we choose to react that sets us apart from the beaten to the victorious overcomer. Resilient people allow themselves to be knocked down by life and come back at least as strong as before. Rather than letting difficulties or failure overcome them and drain their resolve, they find a way to rise from the ashes. Don't get me wrong, sometimes we get knocked down pretty hard and it hurts. It may take some time to recover and that's okay, as long as you don't stay there too long. Choose to begin living in self-strength and get back up. When you do this, it's the greatest gift of self-love you can give to yourself. And it is the greatest gift you can give to those you love. By modeling an attitude of courage and resilience, your partner, children, grandchildren, loved ones, friends, and coworkers learn by your example. It causes a ripple effect of positive goodness that serves to empower everyone around you. As you ground yourself in who you are, being your authentic self, releasing fear, embracing your true self, you will begin to live in a balanced state of bliss where no one or anything can move you from your core heart center. When you know who you are, you will only make choices that align with you. So who are you? <laughs>